and welcome back guys to another part of our tutorial for Haven and Hearth and as you can see last time we put some rabbit hide on our drying frame and they have successfully dried and we can now make us a water skin and we will find that one in lead working I think no in tools and it requires it says dried cow hide but it's just any hide that is dried so we got a water skin and we should go to the lake here and fill it up and we now got three liters of quality 10 water we can also fill up our cooksa, even if it only holds 0 0.3 liters. So we don't really need that anymore. Can throw that away. But the main thing I want to talk about this time is stats, or as they're called here, base attributes, skill values and also available skills so our base attributes is increased by eating food as said before but what do they actually do well strength increases your base damage in melee hand to hand or with weapon it also gives you a little bit of uh, extra hit points plus it allows you to mine faster and mine harder rock as well and we'll get into mining in a later episode a guilty it will allow you to take less damage be it in melee or range combat. As for range combat, the agility will lower the maximum damage they can do to you based on their perception. And this is how we have a player passing by. Uh, intelligence, well, it increases your attention, giving you the ability to add more and much more expensive curiosities to study at the same time. It also helps with uh, your uh, stealth. So, if you take intelligence and doubles it with your stealth value that will be your actual stealth value so the higher it is the last chance it's for some uh, ranger to spot you're doing a crime or something constitution increase your health pool and will allow you to uh, swim further perception increases your minimum range damage it also increases your chance to uh, spot curiosities and other foibles in the open this goes hand in hand with uh, exploration so at the time we have 10 by 2 maxing it to a total of 20 in exploration charisma is mainly for a village leader or a group leader for a raid or anything like that dexterity increases the soft cap of clay 
or anything that you make with clay. And Psyche will soft cap your smithing and iron working stuff. So heading over to the skills. Unarmed combat is uh, quite essential in the beginning. We should always get this to about 10. Then you can raid until without having to run away. They can just stand there hitting you. They won't do any damage. Melee combat is useful for those who have great weapons like swords and the axes that came later. Markmanship will decrease the the time it takes to aim in on a target. Exploration helps us find forgeables out in the world. Stealth, well, less chance to be spotted in crime or find evidence. Sewing increases your quality in so stuff like tunics, clothes, armor, uh, smithing, well same there, increases the base quality of your hammers, armor, weapons, anything that has to do with metal, and same goes with carpentry, anything that has to do with wood, the higher it goes the better quality will get there and also same for cooking increases the soft cap for you making bread or food or anything farming will increase your seed quality and will also increase your um, tree quality if you plant trees now Survival will not only increase the soft cap of anything in the world, mostly forgeables, and that is the forgeable is equal the soil cap um, quality. So the higher quality soil, the higher quality forgeables, and those are often the equal number. Now when you farm you want the highest quality soil possible because your <clears throat> wheat or seed quality cannot go above that uh, soil quality. And survival also increases the soft cap of meat and skins from uh, boars and bears and even trolls and I think also deer and that is also based on your well whatever you use to skin the beast or to butcher it with be it a stone axe or a sword so the higher quality stuff you get the better products you can produce and this goes on for for a very long time and then at last we have the skills that you unlock So as you can see, we have unlocked uh, quite a few of them, and I think Wilderness Survival and Oral Tradition, those are the two that you, and Primitive Tools, those are the three skills that you start with. And after that you will have to 
spend learning points to increase your chance to unlocking new skills and two of the most important skills you can get is boat building and geomanry which we don't have here because we need to unlock uh, the will to power first what those two skills will do is they will allow you to build a boat which will allow you to travel the rivers to find a suitable, suitable location to either settle down or maybe find forage balls or anything and geomanry will allow you to claim an area as your own and as luck would have it in this particular area we haven't had anyone steal our stuff yet but if you if I were to claim this area here and someone would go in here and take something from me if a ranger would come by here anytime later he would actually see there will be sense of theft here and he can go take it up and track the thief down and eventually murder him maybe but more onto that later so another thing I would like to discuss is we need a fence to defend ourselves against beasts not that we can rely on it too much but it's always something so to start off we need a lot of branches and we should start with a corner post and I think we should make it here and as you can see this one takes 10 branches to build and while we're at it there is uh, one thing that people tend to do wrong that even I did wrong the first time I played this game so instead of building corner post all the way up like I used to do when I started the game and I had no idea that you should right click them and click extend north so instead of 10 branches it will only cost one and then we can extend this as we see fit now when you get a little bit further in game and you will start to build a palisade you should always pave the ground where you build the wall if you don't the walls will degrade and you should have some real big troubles after that let's see let's hide that thing okay let's only hide let's not hide walls so so you do this for however long you want to this wall to be now if there's anything you would like me to cover or something or talk about please put it in the comment below as this is just a test character that I will show you stuff with I have a main character that I have got myself pretty far with and you will probably see footage from his place too I will probably do my mining part from his place 
and maybe even some taming and stuff like that. So we st should extend one more north and place corner post. Now, as you can see, this corner post only cost five, which is pretty good. So it's always the first corner post that costs a little bit extra. Now one more thing about fences that as we haven't claimed this area it will also degrade pretty fast. But these uh, normal fences, the corner posts on palisade and brick corner posts you will be able to uh, seal them so you can't expand upon them you can't really do that with uh, this pole fence and when you build the palisades it's crucial that you seal those corners because there's a rather big risk that someone with evil intent will come and grief you and especially by just building onto that wall I've seen a couple of people in the forums doing the that mistake and they're not particularly happy about it and there's also a small risk that uh, well not only getting stuck but you will get a key to the gate and that key is uh, very, very essential for you to keep safe. Unless you want to end up like I did a couple of weeks ago when my key bearer got murdered and my main character was locked inside my own palisade. What's was not that fun. But thank thankfully I had a good neighbor with the name of Wester70. And he is also doing some tips and tricks videos for this game. And you should definitely check him out. Now, thanks to him, he did exactly what Griefers would do. He blocked my entrance by building a wall in front of it. And as luck would have it, he didn't have to build a new corner post or anything but I was building a wall outside my palisade to uh, cover up my mine entrance so we just extended upon that so let's see and the last corner post so we now have an almost finished wall we just need 
to build the gate. Now that usually costs a small sum of resources. In this case, the same as the corner post. Ta-da! And here's a little glitch. Uh, when you build it, it looks like it's open, but it's actually closed. So you will have to right-click it and open it. So now we finally got ourselves a somewhat secure place to be at. And we should expand from here. And we will see where we end up next episode. I hope you liked this tutorial video. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.